Okay, I just want to start with a brief statement on, on yesterday's tragedy. Um, you know, um, the, those tragic events really hit deeply here with, with the Royals. Um, you know, for those of us that live in the community, um, even more so, we, we really want to send our, our heartfelt thoughts out to, to those who are affected, especially the families, um, especially for the family of Lisa Lopez Galvan and, and her brother, who the Royals have worked really closely with. And we just hope that uh, everyone can, can move past it and, and heal quickly. When you hear something like that happens, what, what goes through your mind? disbelief really you know I mean like you know just hopeful that it's not true you know and then when it starts to be plastered all over the, the news it's, it's hard to, you know it's impossible to avoid and it's just then you just pray for the safety of everybody that was there and you know you start getting a million messages of who was there and everyone concerned just for people that are in the area so it's just terrible what were the conversations like just with your players at, with the reaction of the news? Well, they were all watching it on TV here in disbelief, really. You know, I mean, it's just, there's nothing you can say in the, in the moment. You know, as every, all the information's coming in of who was there and what happened and, you know, how the, the, there's confusion. Um, but for everybody to just see it happening and unfolding like that is just, just terrible. It's hard to transition to, yeah. to baseball. Um, but I, I wondered, you know, with Will Smith, the, the addition of Will Smith in your bullpen, um, what, what does that do for the unit as a whole, just to have him, a veteran like him, and the others too that you've added, um, you know, in the bullpen and then also when you're able to call him as a pitch? Yeah, Will specifically, I mean, he's, he's a stabilizer, really. You know, he's, he's a super competitive guy, a winner, um, somebody that wants nothing more for the Royals than to, to get back to the winning ways. He has a tremendous amount of pride for this organization. Um, and he's somebody that has that belief that it's going to happen, and that has no choice but to rub off on other guys. When you bring in a player like that, he fully believes like he wants to change <clears throat> the culture here. What does that do for everybody who's returning? It's year? exciting, is what it is. I mean, you know, immediately you probably heard JJ say like he signed Will, and Will is like, okay, now what? What do I need to do? What are we going to do? How do we get this going? And you know, for a player of his stature and his experience to to care that much, to, to want to come back and not just be concerned with himself and where he's going to be, it's motivating to everybody around him. I know you, when you signed him, you know, JJ said that he's going to get opportunity to close. Is that still um, in play? Is you guys sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, we're not going to anoint any one person that we're going to use every day, but, you know, as you've heard me say, like you can never have too many people pitching well or playing well. So hopefully we have a lot of save opportunities and you know, Will gets a lot of them, but when you have more chances, other guys are gonna have to be able to do it as well because you can't pitch every day. Uh, we've seen some of the, the new slogans this year, rain the zone. Um, how important would that be to command the strike zone this year and really stay in games and be more competitive? Well, it's no more important this year than it, than it ever has been. I mean, that's a, you know, that's a new slogan that Brian and the guys are using, but the message has never changed over the history of the game. I and mean, you have to throw the ball over the plate to be successful. And, you know, some of the additions of the guys we've added, that's what they've historically done. And, you know, the guys that are continuing to develop, they will continue to get better at it. And for Brady Singer, um, spoke to him today. He said he feels better, got some additional rest. So how important do you think that would be for him to kind of utilize this normal spring training to get back on track? Yeah, Brady needs a normal spring. You know, last year was extremely disjointed, um, but, you know, he still was out there to compete every night throughout the season. But it'll definitely help him to have a normal spring. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. What's the excitement level right now with camp finally opening and you've got a sizable group of you know, all the pitchers, but obviously position players too? Yeah, there's a lot of guys here early or have been here early, um, which is kind of the norm. You know, guys like to get here and get comfortable, but it is exciting. And, you know, it's been an exciting off season, and it's exciting to have that official like opening and get everybody out there and, you know, get the team together. Um, and I know the guys that we added are excited to be here and then it draws the energy out of the guys that have been here before too. Uh, just in regards to that, um, we talked a lot about you know how strike zone needs to be better. Uh, what does that look like you know in, in spring when you guys are trying to drill that message into uh, these guys' heads? 
Well, I mean, I think, you know, with the additions we made, those guys are historically strike throwers. So it's not it's nothing new for them. It's not something that you're going to have to really pound a message into those guys. The other guys know that everyone knows that that's an important thing. And the guys work on it. They, they accomplish it at different times in their career. And, you know, I feel like we took a good step forward with some of the guys last year that were here, you know, with Marsh and... Zerpa and those guys, you know, they, they know the importance of it. It's just a matter of continuing to keep it on the front burner. Was it like having some of your veterans come in and take on that leadership role with some of the young guys? Like you have guys like Carter Jensen, this is his first time here being in big league camp, and the guys taking him under their wing. Well, it, for the guys that are in their first big league camp, there's never another one like it, right? So you, it's all new, it's all fresh, it's it's exciting. You're around major league players for the first time. You know, and, and guys, you know, I think the organization does a really good job of preparing them for this. Um, you know, the Jensen's and guys like that that are in their first camp. But the guys that are here that are veterans, they're not guys that we've asked to come in and do something other than what they already do. That's the quality of person they are. We don't bring them in and say, hey, you're here to lead the young guys. That just happens organically, and that's what's cool about it. Man, they're gorgeous. I mean, you know, it's amazing. That stuff is so far away from my mind like how the how that comes together but man if that if you could snap your fingers and have that done and you know it's just it's amazing how great it looks how fired up are you for for year two with the Royals? yeah i mean every spring is exciting right i mean you you're, you get out here the weather's beautiful the you get to see the guys and it's and everybody the camaraderie that everybody loves is in full swing right away um, you know, we have to go through the process of spring training and the steps to get guys ready responsibly, but um, I'll be super excited for opening day. And, you know, today is probably the second to that, you know, is to, to get out here and get the uniform on and, and feel like, all right, here we go. Season's getting ready to go. Thank you. All right. I wonder just like when guys start getting on the mound and, um, you know, throwing lives, throwing against hitters, does that build excitement um, and you, know, you see them start to take the next steps toward the season what what is that feeling like the first feeling is like how does anybody hit one of these pitches I mean you know when you haven't seen it for so long and you're standing that close and the explosiveness and the velocity and all that it's exciting to see that and then you know you just hope that the guys feel good after they throw and then once a hitter gets in there that's that you're right it is that's when you start to feel the competition aspect of it and all that work they put in in the off season, you know, now you get to see, okay, what does that feel like? Because you can take live at bats in the winter in a cage and feel good throwing your bullpens, but now it's time to get back out here and start to feel feel that competition aspect. What was the balance like for you this off season to you know, let guys have their space, have their off season, but also keep in touch and understand what they're working on? I know Sweeney visited a couple guys, just a couple pitchers. Yeah, all over the place. it is a tricky balance, right? Because and that's where we need to know the people individually. Um, some people want more space, some people want more attention, and that's our job to figure that out. Um, but uh, we have so many guys staff-wise that care so much about the players, whether that's the trainers, the strength coaches, everybody's wanting to make sure that everything's going as well and the guys are getting every bit of attention they need. So it's a tricky balance, but just letting them know that we're here for them and, and understanding what's going on with them and their personal lives too, we, we try to do that. You had, some, you had some guys that were stepping in the box during those live BPs, Vinny, most notably. What is it like to see him being back at the plate, swinging again, feeling good. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I know how excited he is. And, you know, he made a point to me a couple, maybe a month or so ago, you know, this is really going to be his first normal major league camp. So we think of him as, you know, a, a, an everyday guy, you know, and he's last, the, the year he got to the big leagues, he wasn't in major league camp. And then last year he had the WBC. So this is really his first time to settle in, enjoy the whole experience and be with his teammates. So. Um, to see him out there and healthy is really something we're excited about. What does he? does his return do for your lineup as a whole? A lot, you know. I mean, he's he's a dangerous threat power-wise, but he also is a contact guy at the same time, which is very rare. Um, and you know, to stabilize the middle of the order with another left-handed bat is something that we really need. I know you had Salvi last year, but um, to offer another piece of protection for Bobby, I mean, does that kind of go unnoticed within his return too? Oh, I don't think it goes unnoticed. Yeah, and then you you know, and you add Renfro and guys that guys that people have to be concerned about in the lineup. Then you know, 
you know, they have to be concerned with everybody, but at the same time, those guys have a track record of doing it, and people are a little more aware. All right. Thank you. Dave. Thank you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about John Schreiber and what he would bring to your bullpen this season? Yeah, we're really excited to, to acquire John. Um, we, I've seen him quite a bit pitching in Boston. He's got really good stuff. Super competitive. He can bring another, you know, not only a more diversity, you know, different arm slot, different look from the bullpen, but somebody that's pitched in high leverage. Um, somebody that we consider able to make us a deeper bullpen overall and just a better team. What do you remember about him from when you guys faced him a lot? Yeah, he, he'd come in in high leverage, you know, probably more sixth, seventh inning back then, um, occasionally maybe the eighth. Um, but. I, I knew he had enough weapons to get righties and lefties out. He's got a good breaking ball that he can get to the back foot of lefties. He can elevate if he needs to, but predominantly two-seamer um, to righties really runs it in on him and the slider away. How important is it to have that diver diversity in your bullpen, guys that have two-seamers, some that are flamethrowers and things like that? Yeah, really. I mean, you, you don't want, you know, you think about a series, you don't want guys to get comfortable seeing the same exact arm slot or the same type of stuff over and over. So the more we can spread things out a little bit and make it a little tougher for the opposing hitters, the better it is. We talked about increasing depth this offseason. I mean, do you feel like you've done that? with all of the moves that you've made over the course of the winter? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think we've increased the internal level of competition. You know, depth does that, right? I mean, you have to, you got other guys that want those spots. And, you know, the good thing about John and Nick Anderson and those guys too, there there's options, um, you know, and, and just to know that guys get used up and tired or injured and we have opportunities to bring other guys up, you know, it's, it's depth. It's you know you saw last year how many people we needed. Yeah, I know you you're not gonna name you know one guy as your closer, but does Schreiber will Schreiber get opportunities back there? Well, the good thing about all of this is you know you you hope we're putting a much better team on the field. So the more games you win, the more times you need high leverage relievers to pitch in the back end. So we want to have as many options as we can there. You know, Will has the most experience as a closer for sure by far of any of these guys. But Nick's closed, Stratton's closed, Schreiber's closed a couple games. You know, so we're, Carlos has pitched in the back end. So it's pretty exciting to to have MacArthur as well as pitched. All these guys have had that under their belt. I know you you mentioned last year you know, you got you needed so many guys, but what specifically about your bullpen last year made you go into the offseason knowing the kind of pitcher that you wanted to target in free agency and trades, and um, you know, increasing the depth overall. Well, I think. Clearly, the one thing we've done is attack strike throwers. You know, I mean, these guys have a track record over time of attacking hitters and making them make decisions. Thank you. Good. Yep. Okay. Nailed it.